Aquarius, it's you. Aren't you so happy to be you? If you're not, think about it right now because I am getting that so, I just got a big old download from Spirit. And it's just an overwhelming feeling of gratitude for being who you are. There's something happening for you this month in March. This is not from cards. This is just a download. This is a message for some of you um, for whom this is resonant, but where you realize, you realize to a deeper degree how much your gifts, certain experiences you have, certain skills you've learned, certain lessons you've really internalized, how much that benefits you now at this particular juncture in time, at this particular point on your journey. Um, some of you will be feeling very grateful that you are who you are, that you've experienced what you've experienced, that everything you've gone through has brought you here to this particular moment, um, which is so cool. And I want everyone to feel that all the time, but I love that this is a special message for you specifically this month. Speaking of that, Aquarius, there's gonna be some things in this March tarot reading that resonate with you. There's gonna be some things that don't. Um, what resonates is what is meant for you. What doesn't is meant for someone else. And that's the beauty of being all different, of being unique. If you wanna understand yourself on like a fuller picture of yourself, feel free to watch the readings for your sun, moon, rising, Venus, any other placements. This one, this is good for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sometimes we gotta be detectives. And I'm talking about detectives who really love puzzles. I guess that's all detectives who put the pieces together. But guess what? The big puzzle is this picture of you. It's this beautiful picture of you. And it's gonna, it's, it's a lifetime game. Um, let the games begin. I guess I'm starting the games. Um, let's see what's in store. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I even tell you who I am? My name is Desi. This is my channel, Starchaeology Tarot. And I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful to connect with you in this way. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this channel. Um, everyone in the collective, you know who you are, um, who's bringing very good energy to this space. I love you. I just love you. Sorry if that's nuts for me to say, but I can't censor it, guys. I straight up love you. Let's see what March is for you, Aquarius. Aquarius, I don't even know what the problem is here for March. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you other than March is shining for you. Truly shining. We have the Ten of Cups. We got the Ace of Pentacles. We got the Eight of Wands. There is a rainbow coming here after, after a big old storm. Queen of Swords is at the bottom of the deck, so I think some of you maybe are... Um, Queen of Swords here is at the bottom of the deck, so I think some of you are not jaded um, necessarily because the Queen of Swords is very, she's got a good head on her shoulders. Um, and Aquarius, you you really do. Like your, your experiences have shaped you, have taught you things, um, have given you a pretty sharp, practical, critical mind as you continue on your journey. Um, but it's also made you, it's hardened you. Not jaded you, but hardened you, your experience up until this point. Um, not hardened you to the point where you are not inviting more to come your way. Um, the Queen of Swords invites, just says, bring it on. She says, keep, you know, Keep bringing it on. But she doesn't smile <laughs> looking out at what's before her. She's um, 
known as the widow card to to a certain degree she's what the biggest lesson that she's learned is i have to make this happen for myself there's no one going to be looking out for me i have to look out for myself um and i can do it i've proved it over and over again i've proved it um but life is hard and I'm not going to get help. It's me who's got to do it for myself. It's me who's got to help myself. And while for many of us, that is such a great lesson to learn to a certain degree, for those of us who have a, you know, some sort of karmic path that especially that needs uh, really where we need to learn that, um, that's great. To a certain degree, though, it also can limit us. Um, it can also dampen our joy. It can dampen a happily ever after when it's looking us straight, square in the jaw. <laughs> um, there's something that happens to you, I think, in March, Aquarius, where you are gazing at it in awe and your first thought might be, well, I better enjoy this now because I don't know how long I'm going to have this. Um, it could go away at any second. I need to consciously like really actively, aggressively be grateful for this. I need to ag aggressively be happy about this, aggressively um, marvel at this rainbow in front of me. Instead of being these children who, yeah, yeah, the rainbow's there. Um, but we don't need to comment on the rainbow almost in this meta way. We don't need to be focusing so much on the rainbow that we that our uber focus on it even on a good thing can make us not present in this moment the, the children are so much more freer in the ten of cups than the parents because that rainbow is the default for them that rainbow is what they expect joy is their baseline they don't need the conditions of a rainbow in order to be playing. And that's kind of what this message, I think, is, is for you, Aquarius, in March. You don't need a rainbow to play. Sure, it's going to come out in March. There, there, there is some real fulfillment happening for you in March. Ten of Cups kind of fulfillment. I mean, happily ever kind of fulfillment where you are, your, your joy is... is really peaking in a way it, it hasn't in a while. Um, and I don't mean peaking like it's the peak and it's only downhill from here. It's more like this is a peak. Um, and you'll continue to peak in so many ways throughout your life. But can you enjoy the moment without measuring it against what has come before and what will come after? Can you play and be present in it without latching onto it and feeling the pressure of having to enjoy it and having to be grateful for it and having to really know how lucky I am because this could be gone at any moment. That's not real gratitude. That's fear-based. That's relief. That's the difference between being grateful and being um, relieved in a single moment and, and then immediately getting wrapped up again in the worry of when what's going to happen when it's gone. This happily ever after ending that comes for you is also a beginning it's a huge beginning ace of pentacles and eight of wands swift good news coming to you swift action happening it all begins with you being given a chance that's really what i'm hearing is you're being given a chance in march um What's so beautiful about it, though, is that you are not being given a chance and that's what brings on an ending. That's what brings on the feeling of like, I, it's the end of this, the fairy tale and um, now I know I'm living in a fairy tale because of this new opportunity. You feel the fairy tale before the new opportunity even comes. You're feeling, you're channeling that emotional fulfillment, emotional joy, um, you're channeling the fairy tale. And again, this is not conditional. 
When I say fairy tale, I mean you are channeling the children who are playing completely independent of the conditions around them, whether they are good or whether they're bad. Good or bad, right? It's you being able to channel those children. It's you being able to tap in to that brand of joy, that brand of living, fair, living the fairy tale that then makes, makes space in your life for new beginnings to come, for a new opportunity to come. Because you aren't so obsessed, clutching, grasping, desperate for the opportunity itself. Because you're able to see the rainbow, the default rainbow in your life. This Ace of Pentacles, though, really is someone giving you a big chance. A very big, tangible chance. This is money coming to you. This is a job coming to you. Um, this is a very real, tangible, concrete opportunity. And now you're going to be able to really taste it for the first time. It allows you to take action towards what you've wanted in a way that before, up until this point, maybe you have you have been waiting for conditions to happen to allow you to take that action or make you feel deserving of taking action towards a dream. Now you have no excuses in March. What's really happening is that your desire is finding ground. It has had no place to live. And you are being given real estate for your dream to take root. That's what I'm hearing. You are being given land to plant your dream in. You're being given land to let your dreams land somewhere rather than just floating out in space chaotically, directionless. Um, this gives them direction, it gives them, which then allows for swiftness and movement. You are giving yourself finally the opportunity for your fire, soul purpose, desire to find not only its path, but culminate in an actual ending and an actual outcome and result. Eight of Wands can mean arrows of love. Um, for some of you, this is a proposal. This is a proposal of love either being made on your behalf or being accepted. It's someone offering a love. Um, it's someone shooting their love arrow, whether it's you or someone else to you. Maybe some of you, I've heard, you're, you've, you've kind of written yourself off oh wow I'm, I'm this is important for some of you um there is a happily ever fairy tale and ending that some of you have been very focused on and you've thought well if i have that ending then i'll be happy and i'll have this but the truth is that feeling the ending feeling what you think you will feel with that fairy tale ending with that romance manifested if you are able to feel that way find things in your life now find the rainbows in your life now your current situation that make you feel that kind of fairy tale fulfillment then that's what allows the arrows of love to actually find their target This is about you matching the vibration of what it is that you want. And as long as you don't match that vibration, as long as you are constantly looking towards the future, like the Queen of Swords, as just a mirror of your past, then the vibration that you hold is the one of your past, 
not the one of what you want, what you haven't had yet, what you haven't tasted yet. If you're able to harness this energy of these children where happiness is the default, it's not always expected, but it is a default. I hope that's clear what that difference is. It's Children know that the rainbow won't be out always, but happiness is still their default. If you are able to make that high vibration of emotional fulfillment, of the dream coming true, the happily ever after, the fairy tale ending, fairy tale union. I'm feeling for some of you this is very much a union, like these arrows of love very much means this. Um, it's the feeling of that first, and it's cliche, but it's a feeling of feeling that within yourself first. Then you are given a real life opportunity. The arrows of love find direction in the real world and the relationship becomes concrete. It becomes tangible. A partner becomes tangible. It's not something that just remains in the ether, directionless and floating. It's like a partner is then given a map to you. That's what's happening for some of you in March. Um, if it's not about a love relationship, then this is about just something that you have wanted for a long time. So think about everything that I just said about vibration. This is about something that you have desired. This is about the fire in you, how you would describe that fire in you. Is that describing a creative project? Is it describing a life mission, a purpose, soul purpose? a goal that you really want to achieve. It's about feeling as if you've already experienced the happily ever after ending before you have. And it's that that then allows it to come into your real world. Don't abandon the lessons you've learned as Queen of Swords, the practicality, the, lo the logical thinking, the critical thinking that you've gained. Those are all skills, but they are not your only skills. They are not the only things you have in your tool belt. Because when you treat them like those are the only things you have in your tool belt, that's where you limit the possibilities of your future, the potential of your future to only fit within the past you've experienced. You want new things to come into form. So be living your present moment. With that kind of fulfillment as your default. Something that you practice regardless of the conditions around you. That's the message Aquarius. Um, I would love to hear what this means for you specifically in your life. Feel free to comment below and share if you feel open um, enough. I am holding space for you. It is an honor to receive whatever it is you share with me. It's an honor to share this space with you in this time um, and a privilege to read your cards for you. So thank you for sharing this with me and um, for continuing to co-create a better world. That's what I consider the collective doing here and it's an honor to be a part of it. Thank you, rooting for you in March. I love you and I'll see you next time.